My name is Tim Erickson, and I am Tim uh, St. Paul Tim on the internet, on Backdrop.org and other places. And I'm here to talk today to talk about the Resource Time Slots module, which is being maintained by IndigoZella. Uh, IndigoZella is doing some great work in the Backdrop community and a huge contributor, and we really appreciate all that she is doing. And let's see, it looks like... Um, this is an original module, I, I guess, as opposed to a port of an existing Drupal module. It is, I would note, uh, does not have an official release yet. I've done a little bit of experimenting with it today, and it seems pretty stable. And what it does, it does well without bugs. So hopefully there'll be a release soon. I suspect that maybe there are plans for additional features before a release, but uh, getting, uh, I'm sure Andy Gazella would appreciate some testing and, and feedback on the module. And that might move it along some. Uh, the, re the excuse me, the README file describes this as provides a field type to reserve time slots for configurable resources, and the widget type, time slot, full calendar. Uh, that's a mouthful. Uh, basically, what it does is it takes uh, limited resources and uh, resources and allows you to create basically a reservation right kind of what what the uh, the title sort of implies anyways we have uh, it, uh, uh, i'm showing you the github page right now there is no official backdrop release as i mentioned so you can't uh, we can't view this on backdrop.org but you can find you can find a whole number of modules that have not yet been released at backdrop uh, dash contrib um, we'll take a quick look there just to you um, for example, the format, you know, here, here's a whole list of modules. And, and if you just come here by default, it's showing you the modules that have been most recently updated. And sometimes you'll see modules that are being worked on at the moment and don't have official releases. So if you're looking for something, uh, a module like, uh, you know, resource time slots, you can come here, uh, just type in resource, see what modules come up what repositories there we go so this is the only repository that came up in the in the backdrop contrib space that is about resource uh yep there we go um so again if you don't find a module you're looking for on backdrop.org i encourage you to come and look in backdrop contrib on github realizing that uh, there are some modules here that haven't been released which is always a little bit risky in terms of the fact that they haven't been as tested as much and maybe the maintainer uh, has held them back for a reason however sometimes it's just uh, the maintainer well just this last week somebody asked hey how come this module hasn't been uh, released it, it, I'm using it on my website and it's stable and the maintainers response was oh I just didn't have time to test it and you know now that you've reported that it's stable I'll go ahead and cut a release and so uh, an official release was made of that module just because somebody found it, tested it, and, rep and, and reported back to the maintainer. So that's something that you can do to sort of help move module development along. Let's take a quick look at how this module works. And uh, I've got a, a, a brand new site here without any content uh, or, or haven't done any prep work on this. Uh, I do use Dev with Lando, um, Lando to, to manage my local uh, environments, and I'm working here on my local uh, computer to create this site. First thing we're going to do is just enable the module. I haven't even done that yet. Okay, we can see that usually if there were any configuration for the module, there'd be a link here. Uh, we don't see any. So, and I know from looking at this already that you don't configure the module directly, but what we do have to do is we have to create uh, two content types. So the first content type we're going to create is the type of content that we want to reserve or, you know, allow to be reserved. And uh, I'm going to say for this purposes, we're going to do a really simple room reservation system. So I'm going to name my content room, type room. I keep this simple, not add any fields. We don't need any fields on the, uh, on the, the item being reserved. Certainly you could if you wanted to describe and, and do other things with that, uh, that resource. But for the purposes of demonstrating this module, I don't see any need to add that. 
and then we're going to add a second content type, which we're just going to call a reservation. Very straightforward. Uh, I can spell it right, reservation. And I'm not going to add any fields except for one to this because there is one required field uh, to make this all work. Uh, we have to enter a, uh, a field of the type resource time slot. This is a field type provided by this module. And I'm going to call this also reservation. This is my actual reservation on the reservation content type. We don't have any choices here under the widget. Uh, the widget is a time slot full calendar. I'm going to hit save. And now there are a couple of choices we have to make here. First of all, we have to pick what is the resource that we are reserving and we want to reserve rooms. So I'm going to pick that. What is the minimum time slot somebody can reserve? I'm going to bump that down to, well, let's leave it at an hour this time. Uh, I've, I've experimented with both. Now, if you don't constrain slots to business hours, it's going to let people pick 24 hours a day. Um, you can pick constrained slots to business hours and then define what business hours are for you. However, there's a, a limited flexibility, right? I can pick any days, any days I want, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday could be my work week. And I could do this from nine to five and, and I'm using uh, 24 hour time clock. So excuse me, five o'clock PM would be 1700 hours. So uh, nine to 17. Um, also, I can say, for example, what is the minimum availability delay? And that is, you know, I maybe don't want to reserve anything for tomorrow because that's too soon. We wouldn't have time to get it ready. So we're going to say that you must reserve seven days in advance and maximum one month in advance. Uh, well, let's make it two, two months in advance. Okay, we could create a default value that we want uh, the default or item that's going to be reserved, except we haven't created any yet. So we can't do that at this stage. So I'm going to go ahead and save the second content type. So we have two content types now. Uh, all that's really left is I need to go and make some rooms uh, that people can reserve. And I don't know, let's say that we are a, a small bed and breakfast with some rooms, like we have a party room and a meeting room that we can rent out to the public or to, 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 to clients, uh, you know, our guests. But we want to give them a computer, um, a website where they can reserve it. So I pick, I pick that. Now I go back and um, create one more room. I'm going to create a meeting room. just occurred to me that the party room is only available from nine to five. That's maybe an over uh, a, a limiting factor on how useful the party room is going to be. But we're going to, for the purposes of our discussion, have some mid afternoon. Well, we'll go with meetings because that makes more sense. Uh, so now we've got everything set up really for people to start making the reservations. So now somebody comes along and they go to reservation uh, to create a reservation. And let's, we're going to, the board, board meeting will be our reservation. We are not going to add any data at this time, but we want to reserve the meeting room. There we go. We can see that the earliest, let's see, it won't let me go back any. It's basically, I think, looking out one, yes, uh, we said seven days, and seven days from now is uh, October 1st. And I think if I scroll through this, it's only going to let me go out two months. Yep. So till the end of November, roughly. Um, also, uh, I think we can see that some days of the week are available and not others. Um, the shaded out ones are the ones that we, we did not list as part of our work date. Any other day is available from nine to five. And I can just pick any one time slot. I guess I can only pick one at a time. Um, I can grab, uh, oh, I think I can drag these, yep, I can drag them around my reservation. And on top of that, oh, I am seeing uh, very faintly the time slot that I'm picking. Uh, I would say that that's 
very, very difficult to read. You wouldn't even know it's there, but it, it is there, and that could be made more obvious with a little theming. Um, the other choice I have is to drag this out. I can um, drag the room out and reserve for multiple hours. Uh, I don't believe there was an option to select a maximum uh, amount of time that you could reserve it. And I can just start that way and just drag it out and reserve for four hours. So I'm going to go ahead and save this room. The board, we've got a long board meeting coming up. And then let's go and create one more reservation. Uh, this one for the finance committee. Oh, I should have done the party committee. Okay, the meeting room. And here we go. So again, this is the first week that you can, can actually reserve these rooms uh, starting on October 1st. We can see this is no longer available because somebody's reserved that. So we're going to have to have our meeting after that. And it's a little shorter meeting, two hours. There we go, save. So uh, the, the actual reservations right now are just showing this little line of information saying that the meeting room has been reserved from Saturday, uh, uh, October 2nd through uh, from 2 to 4 p.m. Um, I will do one more thing in this demonstration, which is just create a quick view because there is a limited, so I could create a view of reservations. There we go, it'll be content of type reservation. What I am going to do is a table of fields. Uh, we've only got two and we're not gonna make any more, so I won't worry about pagers and stuff right now. Um, Let's go ahead, auto preview. We can see our two meetings would show up right away in our view, but what we need to do is add the information about the actual reservation, right? We want to see when, when those room, which meeting has been, which room has been reserved and at what time. So if we go up here under fields, we can add uh, uh, from, I'm, I'm starting to type reservation because that was our, our node type, but it's showing me the available fields. And we do have uh, just the, we could pick the end or the start time. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do all three of these. The, the, the main one, uh, just the start and just the end time, although they're in the wrong order. And I am going to kind of browse, breeze through these pretty quick. We'll come back in a minute and look at the, the, the formatter, formatters that are available. But I want to first show you what the defaults are. There we go. So here are our, our, our defaults. Uh, we should probably quickly switch this. If we click here and hit rearrange, we can list the start time before the end time, which I think would be helpful. So this, these are three different uh, fields available to us in views. One is just the reservation with all the information. One is just the start time. One is just the end time. Uh, we can, we have a couple of choices. Uh, I'm going to change two of these. The first one, we our formatting options are the default, or there's a list uh, version. So there we go. So the list version shows the room, the start, and the end time all kind of neatly broken out. So we don't need these other fields. Although, uh, if we were to take, say, the start time, and the same would be true of the end time, but we're just going to do the one, we do have the ability here to pick... Uh, you know, any of our, our date formatters, and we could create our own or a custom formatter as well. Um, I'm going to pick, uh, where is it, this one? Well, that's the one we already have. So actually, let's do, just to be wild and crazy, let's do the time hence. Uh, I don't usually use this one, which is why I'm going to play with it now. There it is. So that reservation is one week and 15 hours hence. And if I do use this one, it's almost always time ago, very seldom time ends. Okay, so that's that. those are some of the tools we have to build views. And I don't know, I'm trying to keep this video as short as I can, so I'd like to kind of just leave it at that and say, uh, hopefully that there might be some more things coming in this module. I personally feel like uh, I have some uses for it. I would like more flexibility in, in sort of picking the available times uh, that's, I think, the big thing right now that I see is that it, it's kind of, I can pick certain days and certain time slots 
but it's the same time slots on all the days. And uh, right, I can't vary it and say Tuesday from two to four or Thursday from four to six. I think that would be nice, but but I really appreciate the work that's went into, the, into this already. So uh, to wrap things up, I'll just uh, invite you to uh, visit us. Uh, um, my company that uh, is sponsoring these videos is Triplo. Uh, Triplo is a, uh, we do a web, web development. We work on Drupal 8, Drupal 9. Uh, we love Backdrop. We're big supporters of Backdrop and other development projects. Uh, we also maintain Simplo, which is a place where you can sort of host your own site and experiment. And we have these, we have these tutorials and such. So I encourage you to check out Simplo if you're just getting going and you want an easy way to sort of start up a backdrop starter kit uh, with some pre-configuration. Uh, that would be great. So uh, enough for today. Uh, oh, and uh, uh, Team Triplo. You can find us on YouTube at Team Triplo, and we have a bunch of videos about backdrop there. Thank you.